One of the most famous trades on Wall Street is Roaring Bank. Now, forget the artificial intelligence frenzy, the most exciting trade on Wall Street right now might just be bad and boring. As winners of the AI boom like NVIDIA Core Power Benchmark stock gauges to record after record, a less remarked upon phenomenon has been unfolding at the heart of the US market. Now, investors are sinking vast sums into strategies whose performance hinges on enduring equity calm. Known as short volatility bets, they were a key factor in this uh, stock plunge of early 2018 when they wiped out in, the, in epic fashion. Now they are back in a different guise at a much, much bigger scale. Their new form larger takes the shape of ETFs that sells options on stocks or indexes in order to choose returns. Assets and such products have almost quadrupled in two years to a record $64 billion that are compiled by Global X ETF show. Now, their 2018 short volatility counterpart, a small group of funds making direct bets on expected volatility, had only about $2.1 billion before they imploded. Shortly, uh, shortening volatility is an investment approach that can mint reliable profits, provided the market stays tranquil. But with the trade sucking up uh, assets and ma major events like uh, the U.S. presidential election on the horizon, some investors are starting to get nervous. The short volatility trade and its impact is the most consistent question we have been uh, getting this year, said Chris Murphy, a co-head of uh, derivative strategy at uh, Susquehanna International Group. Clients want to know how much of an impact is having on market to, uh, and so they can structure their trades better. But we have seen cycles in the past, like 2018 and 2020, where the short volatility trade grows until a big shock blows it up. The good news for Worldwide is that the structural difference of the new funds changes. The calculus, the income ETS, are generally using options on top of a long stock position, meaning that $64 billion isn't all wagering against equity swings. There's also likely a higher bar for broad contagion than in 2018, since the U.S. market has doubled from six years ago. The bad news is that the positions alongside a stack of less visible short volatility trade by institutional players are suspected of suppressing stock swings, which invites yet more bet for calm in the feedback loop that could one day reverse. The strategies are also part of uh, an implosive, wider growth in derivatives that is introducing new unpredictability to the market. Somebody has to sell. The trading volume of used equity options surged to a record last year, propelled by a boom in transaction involving contracts that have zero days until expiration known as the ODTE. That has enlarged the volatility of the market because each derivative amounts to a bet on future price activity. There basically is a natural increase in demand for options because retail is speculating using a short dated lottery ticket type of option, said Vinier Bansali, founder of Volatility Hedge Fund Long Tail Alpha LLC. Somebody has to sell those options. That's where many income ETFs come in. Rather than deliberately betting on market serenity like their short volatility predecessors, the strategists have uh, or they take advantage of the derivative demand, selling call calls or put to earn. Uh, extra cash on an underlying equity portfolio. It usually means capping the fund's potential upside but assuming stocks stay calm and contracts expire worthless and the ETF walk away with a profit. Industry growth in recent years have uh, been remarkable and has uh, been mostly been driven by ETFs. At the end of 2019, there was about $7 billion in the category of derivative income fund, according to data compiled by Morningstar Direct, three quarters of which was in mutual funds. By the end of last year, there was $75 billion, almost 83% of it in ETFs. But while the money involved looks bigger, derivatives, uh, spe derivative specialists and uh, volatility fund managers are so far brushing off the risk of another vol Magadan, as the 2018 sell-off came to be known. John Marshall, Goldman Sachs Group Inc.'s head of derivatives research, said the strategy tends to come under pressure only when the market rises sharply. Most of the cash is in uh, so-called buy and write ETFs, which takes a long stock position and sell call option for income. A big rally increase, the in uh, increases the chances those uh, contracts will be in the money, obliging the seller to deliver the underlying security below the current trading price. Now, it's generally a strategy that is uh, not under pressure. When the market sells off, Marshall said, it's less of a worry for volatility spike. Before the 2018 blow up, Ben Sally at low till correctly foresaw the threat from the growing short volatility trade, he reckons there's a little danger of a repeat because this boom is powered by candy traders simply meeting retail investors' demand for options rather than uh, making leverage bets on volatility falling. In other words, the short volatility exposure itself 
itself is not a uh, destabilizing force, even if such bets are vulnerable to Tomo themselves. Yes, there's a potential of uh, instability if there's a big market move for sure, as Sally said, but some of the selling those options doesn't necessarily mean that there's a massive on hedge short base, he said. Nonetheless, quantifying any potential risk is uh, difficult because even knowing the exact size of the short volatility trade is a challenge. Strategists can uh, take on various shapes beyond uh, the volatility, relatively simple income fund, and many transactions occur on the Wall Street trading desk where information is not available to the public. To many, the income ETF boom is a telltale sign of something bigger taking place below the surface. When you're seeing something going on publicly, there's probably five to ten times that going on privately that you don't see directly, said Steve Ritchie, a portfolio manager at QVR Advisor of Volatility Hedge Fund. Dispersion doubt. Now, those unseen bets include a significant chunk of quantitative investment strategies, structured products sold by banks that mimic quant trades. According to a premium lab, which trades uh, QIS offerings across 18 banks, equity short volatility trades returned 8.9% in the U.S. last year and wound up accounting for roughly 28% of new strategies added to the platform over the past 12 months. Their notion of value is unknown, but consultancy Auburn Partners estimated last year that QIS trade overall command about $370 billion. Hedge funds of uh, gaming relative volatility are also feeding the boom. One of the most notorious short volatility bets is an exotic, exotic option strategy known as the dispersion trade. Employing various complex options overlays, it amounts to being long volatility in a basket of stocks while wagering against the swings of an index like the S&P 500. To work, it needs a broader market to stay subdued or at least experience less turbulence than the individual shares. With the S&P 500 steadily going up while stocks return diverge widely in recent years, the strategy has flourished. Once again, it's difficult to measure the size of the trade, but it's, it's popular enough that CBOE Global Market plans to list a future product tied to the CBOE S&P 500 dispersion index this year. That rise in popularity combined with the leverage and a lack of transparency has prompted Kevin Moore of the Macro Terrorist blog to warn that a market sell-off could upset the trade, forcing an unwinding of positions that could further exacerbate the route. It worries me because the dispersion trade has all the hallmark of a crisis in the making. More wrote, it's exactly the sort of a sophisticated, higher leverage, leverage trade where someone or everyone assumes those guys are math wizards. We don't need to worry about them blowing up because they are hedged, he said. To get an idea of how much short volatility exposure is out there, market players can often be found adding up what's known as Vega. That's a measure of how sensitive an option is to change in volatility. At Ambrose Group, another volatility hedge fund, an internal measure of Vega aggregates options activity for the S&P 500 index. The CBOE volatility index, a gauge of uh, implied price swing in the U.S. equity benchmark, also known as the VIX, and the SPDR S&P 500 ETF trust. Chris uh, CDL, co-chief investment officer, said in January the net short Vega exposure was two times larger than in the run-up to the 2018 route. That means a one-point increase in volatility could incur notional losses double those experienced six years ago. The big worry, panic investors unwinding positions as their losses mount could uh, fuel more volatility which causes more losses and more selling. Such a scenario raises um, the risk of introducing another downside accelerant in the shape of the dealers and market makers who are usually on the other side of the dirty risk transactions. They don't have their own direction of view, so aim to maintain a neutral stance with buying and selling stocks, futures or options that offer uh, the offset each other. In a big market decline, when dealers suddenly find themselves selling higher quantities of uh, options that uh, protect, protect or benefit from the route, it tends to put them in what's called short gamma. The dynamics are complex, but the offshot is that to neutralize the exposure, dealers would have to uh, sell into the downdraft, compounding the drop. For now, the short volatility trades pro proliferation has been proposed as one reason why the VIX or VIX has stayed early low in the past year despite two ongoing major geopolitical conflict and the Federal Reserve's most aggressive monetary tightening in decades. That's because in current conditions, dealers are in a long gamma position that generally sees them buying when stocks go down and selling when stocks when they go up, dampening swings. Now, in uh, its largest, latest quarterly review published last week, the Bank for International Settlement said that dynamic was the likely reason behind the compression of volatility given the boom in uh, strategies that act out income from selling options. The meteoric rise of uh, yield-enhanced structure products linked to the S&P 500 over the last two years has gone hand-in-hand -hand 
with a drop of VIX over the same period researchers wrote. There are good alternative reasons for the calm. The stock market has steadily ground higher as uh, neither the Fed nor the U.S. economy delivered any major shocks over the past year. It's also possible that with so many bets now placed using the short dated options, the VIX no longer captures all the actions since it is uh, calculated using contracts about one month out. Yet QVR advisors also see the footprint of the boom in volatility selling. The degree of a swings price into S&P 500 options, so-called implied volatility, has drifted lower over the years versus how much the index actually moves around its uh, data show. The theory is that money managers flooding the market with contracts to generate income are putting a lead on the implied volatility, which after all is effectively a gauge of the cost of options. The hedge fund has uh, recently launched a strategy seeking to take advantage of cheap derivatives that benefit from large swings in the S&P 500, whether up or down. Post-pandemic, we've seen fundamental and technical reasons for volatility suppression, said Amy Wu Silverman, head of derivatives strategy at RBC Capital Market. While I think that while I think that continues, it becomes more and more difficult to be a short volatility from here. Plenty of macro factors exist with uh, the potential to disrupt the stock markets steady march higher, including the ongoing war in Ukraine and Gaza, lingering inflation, and the American elections. And while volatility selling strategies have uh, provided investors with gains historically, they have a reputation for their role in compounding route. The most famous episode took place in February 2018 when the downturn in the S&P 500 uh, sparked a surge in the VIX, wiping out billions of dollars in trades betting against volatility that had built up during years of relative calm. Amongst the biggest casualties was the velocity share daily inverse VIX short-term note, whose assets shrank from $1.9 billion to $63 million in a single session. A catalyst has yet to uh, emerge to trigger a repeat. Even when the Israel-Hamas war broke out in October, or the U.S. reported harder than expected inflation for January, the market remained serene. The VIX has stayed below its historic average of 20 for almost five months, a stretch of dormancy that was exceeded only two times since 2018. To Tobias Exer, co-chief investment officer of Volatility Hedge Fund, True Partner Capital, that enduring period of calm offers little reassurance. You're assuming a risk. The fact that uh, that risk hasn't materialized over the past one and a half years doesn't mean it doesn't exist, Hexa said. If something trips up the market, the longer the volatility has been suppressed, the more violent the reaction.